I thought I'd pull together all the work holding tips and tricks that I've uh, used successfully in the year, I guess, since I first built this bench. Uh, here we go. Okay, simplest thing. that are permanently stuck in the bench there. For a lot of purposes, that holds the wood just fine. Sometimes you want the wood held firmly, like you want to work off the end of it. Easy enough. The notches uh, are ideal for boring. Yeah, they give you good support all around, and in combination with the holdfasts, they let you uh, release the wood very quickly and flip it over because you almost always want to be able to come back in um, at the wood from the other side once the little uh, point pops through to prevent uh, blowing out the wood. The same thing goes for uh, uh, if you're doing mortises and you want to be able to uh, work back and forth from both sides to uh, both to mark the wood and to um, chisel out the the holes. The, these uh, notches give you a, a way to clamp blocks and so on to it to guide your chisel. Very, very handy to be able to do it all so quickly. Another use for these notches, of course, the first one that comes to most people's minds, I think, is this. This side's square, up and down, and there's a little block down here. It's adjustable and help you keep it square if, it, if, it, if your wood has a problem standing up straight. Just this side is very slightly beveled and matches the wedge. You just pop a wedge in there. It's extremely, extremely slightly fit. You can work on the end, do whatever you like. It's strong enough that you can hold a short piece. It doesn't have to sit on the floor like I, like I did. So let's say we want to work on the edge. That should be pretty easy. Let's put a couple pins in here. I'm just going to use these... Uh, it's hold fast. I've got, a, I've got a board in there. Pretty tight now. See this edge up here is pretty uh has a taper meant to grab a board up to, up to about three inches thick. You just slide it in. That's pretty firm. But if you have a long board, it's likely to pull loose or you just need it held more firmly. Just... Oh, there's two. The crochet is just a piece of sapili wood lag bolted to the side. It's got that curving taper, so it accepts uh, wood of many sizes. I usually leave it off. Uh, if you take it off, and put it back on often enough you might wear out the uh, threads for the lag bolts but if you ever do you can just move up one size. Uh, it's sapili as I say but I think you could get away with a piece of fur. Almost anything. While I'm, uh, while I'm here I'll just show you these. These blocks are, are lag bolted on. These are a little loose now because everything is shrunk. Uh, one of the reasons I'm using lag bolts everywhere is that wood like this is going to grow and shrink, you know, quarter inch or more in, in the winter. 
you just tighten these legs down when you get it square and you've got a, <clears throat> a solid uh, um, piece to work against. You can actually do the same thing with this one. You can pull it over to really lock it in, but um, these are plumb under here with slotted holes so you can adjust them a little bit. This apron here is two uh, pieces of two by eight thick. And it's, it's lag bolted onto a, a, a piece of two by that runs horizontally uh, all the way between the two legs. So it's lag bolted on there, but it's very easy to remove. And again, it's not glued. It's just lag bolted on there because it's, it's kind of a sacrificial piece. Um, you drill a bunch of holes in it, um, tear it up various ways. You can just take it off and, and bolt a new one on. I know uh, old fashioned work holding video would be complete without showing one of these. Um, this little gizmo is called a, a, a doe's foot. And all it really is is just an oblong piece of thin wood. Uh, I've used half inch here, but you can get away with something even thinner. Um, you want it thin because you, uh, you're generally going to use this with flat wood laying down, and it, you've got and it's got a right angle cut in it. But um, the only other thing I did was I took a, a glue stick and glued um, um, a piece of hundred grit sandpaper to the back. The sandpaper is just there to keep it from skidding on the bench top. Um, to use this thing, you put in two pegs at one end, uh, uh, one to keep the wood from skidding long ways and one to keep it from sliding back. And then we're going to use the doe's foot at the other end to wedge the board into these uh, two pegs so that the harder you push on the board, the more tightly the, the doe's foot grabs it. Um, the doe's foot is just pinned down to the bench anywhere that's convenient using these uh, bench dogs. One would probably do it. Um, once it's in there, you can now uh, use a heavy plane, like a scrub plane or something, to go sideways and, and take the wood down quickly. It's in there very tightly, and yet you can just pick it up and uh, put it back in again the other way. This might seem like the dumbest thing in the world, but I've got this little peg uh, that I can stick in the back of the bench uh, to hold a bucket. Um, and in that bucket, I keep all the, the wedges and pins that I'm using sort of at the moment. I, uh, I also have a ripstop nylon toolbox that turned up from somewhere that I keep everything in, but I keep the few things that I'm using uh, all the time in this pail, and it's uh, super fast and easy. While we're on the subject of uh, really dumb stuff, it's probably obvious, but it's not. Johnson's Paste Wax for floors. I love the smell of this stuff. It reminds me of elementary school and stuff. But you put a little bit of this on your on anything really, and it makes it nice and smooth. Especially when things are changing size on you. Keeping a little bit of paste wax on it makes things I'm not a real purist about this traditional stuff. Like, I love C clamps, and <laughs> uh, and they come in super handy for what I'm doing because it's I'm not primarily a woodworker, so I'm always having to hold down metal and plastics and any kind of crazy thing, you know, vices. I'm always wanting to clamp something to this bench, so. Um, uh, I use a lot of C-clamps and a lot of these uh, uh, Jurgensen-style wood clamps. Um, these things are the greatest. I, I've had these since I was a kid, really, I guess. I, I think these things are almost 50 years old. Um, they hold up amazingly well. Jurgensen is actually a brand name, but uh, um, uh, a million different people make them. Um, I, the combination of using... Uh, these Jur Jurgensen clamps and C clamps to hold things down on the bench is is uh, is something I end up doing all the time. Um, the uh, Jurgensens are really good for holding things that um, for holding wood in general, for holding other Jurgensen clamps. So you can you know uh, clamp something, uh, clamp one to the bench and then clamp a, cl a clamp in the clamp jaws and have a vertical 
uh, holding uh, device. Um, mixing it up with these C clamps is something I do. Uh, I've always done all the time. Um, uh, these particular C clamps are, you know, cheapos from the uh, uh, from the big box store, but they're actually better than the uh, old style ones because they have this magic little trigger on them that lets you uh, you press the trigger and there's some kind of half nut that lets you slide the whole um, uh, screw all the way down to the work and then you let go of the button and the clamping starts from there. So they're uh, super fast and easy in combination with these uh, uh, wooden hand screws. So I heartily recommend uh, uh, buying a set of these. I have I have them this size. I have them all the way down to about four inches that I've just sort of accumulated over the years. Uh, I just found six of them at a at a Goodwill store the other day. I don't know what on earth they were doing there, but uh, they're mixed with all the used used shoes and uh, underwear with uh, six uh, Jurgensen hand screws. The notches let you reach in. Um, way into the middle of the bench, which turns out to be very handy for holding down, you know, metal and things like that. I use that a lot. This configuration with uh, using one Jurgensen clamp to hold another is something I do all the time. It's incredibly handy. So the shave horse is a whole thing of its own, but uh, I'm going to just quick show how to slap it on here real quick. It just goes on with really two lag bolts for the uh, uh, mechanical part and then the platform will attach just by sliding it into place and inserting uh, two wooden dowel pins in there. Um, that brown crossbar goes up and down so that you can, uh, uh, by moving it up an inch or down an inch, you can compensate for where the, the pedal is going to be as you work. So if you're working on fat wood, you can keep the pedal at, at an appropriate distance from where you're sitting and and so on. Uh, works great. Um, it just instantly releases the wood and grabs it again and uh, so far I'm very happy with it. It's good for fixing hammer handles and axe heads and things like that. This is the thing I, I showed before. The main structural element of this is this beam that runs across here, and that's one and a half inches below the, the, the deck here. It's clear all the way across, so you can shove bar clamps or whatever you want through it. But one of the main things it's for is this. You shove a board through it. Because I'm carving a little bit. Devices come designed to be um, screwed to your bench top, but I don't screw it to my bench top. Instead, what I do is I screw it to this piece of plywood that I can then clamp onto almost anything. And the way you use this device is uh, This is a homemade pin and post. I just, I just put a piece of aluminum on the lathe and cut this out because sometimes you don't even want necessarily need to get it out again. Like it might be inconvenient to make it removable and you just end up burying it in the piece. And then it's got multiple degrees of freedom. There's a, a ring here that loosens to, to swivel the whole thing. Um, 
this gets a lot of use around here. I aim for making things like this. Like this is almost impossible workpiece to hold because um, it's carved on, you know, it's carved on all sides except the, except the very back. Um, so I just made it. You can actually still see uh, the uh, uh, screw holes in the back from where this was fastened onto it. So I just had it screwed onto there and then I could tilt it and turn it any which way I wanted. The only thing you got to remember is you'll want to keep your wedge going in the direction of the push. line up in case you're missing the point of this. This last one is uh, handy so far, but I'm, I'm not sure whether it's really necessary, but it's really a uh, uh, a side vise. I've just added a, a really simple chop, which is just a piece of wood with uh, two holes bored through it and bored right through the uh, uh, into the bench, uh, deep enough to hold the uh, um, hold fasts. Yeah. So I just slide the hold fasts in, and the uh, uh, chop rests on them. Then I can put the wood in and uh, and use the uh, hold fast to, to clamp the chop down tightly. Uh, it works. It's just fine. But um, I'm not sure you need both that and the use of uh, the vertical uh, pegs in the top to hold uh, small boards upright. I almost think it would be just as handy to uh, uh, just sandwich your workpiece between two pieces of wood and hold it in place with the uh, uh, the vertical pegs, but this would have some uses. Um, I'm sort of throwing it in for completeness. That's it. Those are all the work holding sort of techniques that I've actually used so far on this thing. Uh, they all seem very useful and uh, uh, and very practical. So uh, drop me a comment if you have any uh, anything else you've been able to do with it. And uh, good luck, and I'll see you next time.